Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Fat Mata here from Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art and I'm so excited to be with you here today to share all of my makes of 2023. So I'm going to go through them quickly and also link to any of the videos where you can get some more details about each and every make. I think that I started off the year with a really high note. I made this lovely dress out of a fabric that I picked up from Mood Fabrics Online, this dark floral cotton voile fabric, and this is McCall's 7925. I absolutely adore this dress. I think the silhouette that I got from it was beautiful. I love the tiered skirt. I love a button front dress. So right up my alley. Worked out really well in this fabric. Also, I'll link to the video where I made this, but this was my one and only make in January of 2023. So moving right along, I went into really cozy mode in the winter. And in March, I ended up making a vintage pattern. It's M6287 sweatsuit pattern out of this awesome cotton it was a cotton French terry fabric that I picked up in the dead stock section at G Street Fabrics and immediately came home washed it up and cut out this pattern I had to play a bit of pattern Tetris because I didn't have a ton of fabric but it worked out well I ended up wearing it quite a few times throughout the year because I don't make a lot of lounge clothing I've come to find <laughs> so I really enjoyed wearing it and I think the bright sort of mustard um, color fabric was right up my alley. I then went on to make this white button front crisscross front top um, out of some fabric that I picked up at Joanne in their remnant section over a couple of visits. I was able to use some really lovely buttons here. I'll pop up images of this on, but I think it's such a crisp looking shirt. I absolutely love it and would more than likely revisit this. I think the tie front feature of it really gives it just something extra. In the future, I have noted, however, that I would use a lighter weight fabric more than likely so that it didn't feel so heavy on the body. It's one of the fabrics that you actually find in Joanne's denim section. So it does have a quite a bit of body to it and decent amount of stretch. So I would use something that's more of a cotton set team to pair with that white top, I went into my bag of UFOs and pulled out this gorgeous fabric, which I had already pre-cut into a half circle skirt. And I finally just made the half circle skirt. <laughs> so I picked up this fabric as well from the clearance section in Joann's uh, quite a few years ago and had been meaning to make this skirt out of it. And if you are looking at this fabric and thinking it looks quite familiar, I did end up altering this at the end of the year as well because I ran into some issues with the zipper, but I'm very, very pleased with this skirt. My final makes of March were these dusters and this is Simplicity 1108. With a couple of tweaks, I went ahead and added sort of like a neckband that went all the way down the front. I also added some belt loops and made ties for mine. I ended up making three of these, um, but this was the first one that I made out of this awesome, I think it's a cotton poly blend, but I picked it up in the dead stock section at G Street Fabrics and I just love the colors in here. It's a great topper for sure. The other kimono duster style pieces that I made included one that was also a stripe, like a very technicolor stripe that I made that was a bit drapier. So it was made out of a polyester fabric that I picked up, I believe at Joanne, if I'm not mistaken. And I ended up gifting that to my best friend. The third one that I made was made out of a poly crepe fabric that I also picked up in the clearance section at Joann's. It has a white background with these really lovely um, sort of like a ditzy floral print and I gifted that to my cousin. Coming into April, I did quite a bit of selfless sewing for the Selfless Sew April Challenge. 
here we have a dress that I made for my daughter and this is S8852. It became the dress that I made whenever I needed to make a little girl's dress and here you have it in this gorgeous Ankara fabric and I went on to make a shirt for my son out of the same fabric and I love playing with the pattern placement. When I was making these I had a six yard um, length of this fabric and wanted to make a family set of clothes for four individuals. It was a huge undertaking but I'm really glad that I was able to squeeze it out. For my son's shirt I use S9201. It's a lovely camp style collar shirt for um, little boys and I loved it like this cobalt blue so much it's such a bright pop and I tackled for the first time ever menswear I had not up until this point made anything for my husband yet and I was able to use this lovely pattern it is s8753 s8753 again the pattern placement I was very proud of I learned how to do an actual burrito yoke burrito style method for the yoke like for real for real in this pattern so I'm very grateful to this pattern for that knowledge it's awesome I'll insert a family photo of the three of them in their makes and I'm just so proud of all three of them my husband's top is actually an award-winning shirt I did get a prize from the selfless so April challenge for that make so it's stellar in my books and I'm really really proud of it from there, I wanted to hop on the bandwagon. I had heard so much about this new simplicity pattern that was just sweeping, okay, the sewing community. And this is S9702. I liked that this pattern included these tiered gathered panels. And I thought that that would just make it a little bit more wearable. I ended up making it out of this lovely rayon fabric that I had picked up from the dead sock section at G Street Fabrics. I have my thoughts on it. It's not my absolute favorite make, but I am really glad that I used up this fabric. There are definitely alterations and things I'd need to change about it in the future if I were to make it again. But I do plan to use sort of the Empire line and the gathered um, skirt portion of it in future hacks. Then there was Butterick B6621 and this is a really lovely sort of um, dress, knit dress that has some wrap features. There's one version that's a knot in the front and another that has sort of like um, overlay. I chose to do the view that had the little wrap in the front. I used a gorgeous teal knit fabric that I had picked up at G Street in the dead stock section. I have never worn this dress out and I'll be honest I think I could have gone with cutting a larger size and also I noticed that in knits I prefer a very like a line shape I am very conscious about things that sort of are figure hugging and this does that a little bit and it could just be my shape but it definitely does it on me so I wore it for the photos that I shared but I have not worn it out in real life. Then we roll into Mother's Day and I finally got around to making my dress to match the rest of my family and I squeezed this dress out of the remaining fabric. Again six yards for four people. It's a lot to ask from a fabric so here you have it a lot of sort of piecing together the remaining bits. I am really glad that I persevered and went on to make my dress to match the rest of the family. We still have not taken a family photo with all four of us. I have my husband and the kids and I have myself and the kids. We need to all get together into one but this was a mashup between B6702 and S8834 in the skirt and then I made it a complete button front um, down the front. The nice sort of A-line sort of flared out skirt at the bottom. Again piecing together all of those remnants to get the skirt just right. 
Then we were in June. I ended up making what is effectively like a burkini or a modest swimsuit. So for that, I ended up going with two different patterns. First is M7122, and I use the leggings within that pattern. It's a one-piece legging pattern, and I love it. Then for the top, I opened up one of my vintage patterns, which is a vintage McCall's 3187. And I included like a shelf bra on the inside of that. So I did a hack there and I absolutely love it. It has this gorgeous sort of tropical, has very autumnal colors in it with the brown, the greens, and the orange, but they make me so happy. And so within June, I did a lot of sewing for Father's Day. So keeping up with that selfless sewing. I wanted to make some gifts for my best friend and her sisters. So I made Simplicity S9391 and I used the stuffed animals within that pattern. I ended up making five little stuffies and I utilized um, one of her dad's old shirts. So that was a really nice sort of like heirloom stuffy that I gifted to her and each of her sisters. I like the way that I was able to sort of like commemorate their dad and tie that all up into something that they could keep as a keepsake. Um, making the stuffies was super fiddly. That's the only thing. I think the pieces being so small and trying to get all the curves just right and sewing at a very shallow seam allowance did have its challenges. Also stuffing it and trying to do finishes that I felt proud of. It was an undertaking. <laughs> really really delighted that I stuck it through and made it though and my best friend and her sisters were very pleased to receive them. Then as I mentioned I revisited S8753 for Father's Day. I made my dad the classic fit in his size. He really looked great in it. I was able to gift it to him on Father's Day and he wore it so that made me really happy. And then I used the same pattern and made my older brother a shirt as well and his was actually the modern fit so it's a bit more slim and fit him really really well. Both of those I use various Ankara prints that I had in my stash already so it's nice to be able to go stash diving and make them something. To add to the special effect of it, to match my dad, I made my son a matching shirt to go with the one that I made for my dad. And for my son's shirt, I went back to S9201, the same shirt that I had made previously for Selfless So April. And that worked out really well. And to go along with my brother's gift, I actually made his daughter um, a matching dress and shorts set. So for hers, I used S8852 for the dress and I hacked a vintage S4924 pants set to make a pair of shorts that they could wear and be matchy matchy together. Now all I need to do is take the remainder fabric and make his wife a skirt and they'll have a complete set as well. Still working on getting to that. Then in June it was my daughter's birthday so I made her two birthday dresses. The first is this lovely little dress using the same S8852 that I've been using for all of her dresses throughout the year and this fabric is from Joann Fabrics. I actually think they still have it in stock if you go to like their evening wear sort of section with the fancy fabrics but I had picked up I'm thinking it must have been in the remnant section possibly uh, about a yard of this fabric and had just been looking at it like what are you gonna do with that thought motto? And this is what I ended up doing with it. I made her a lovely little dress which I then lined with cotton poly blend fabric that I picked up in the dead stock section at G Street. I French seamed everything in here and I really appreciate the details and she loved wearing her floral dress on her birthday. I did end up making her a second dress which she wore when we went to go and watch The Little Mermaid. It's using the same pattern but I hacked it. I put this little fluttery bit at the shoulders there, fully lined the top of the bodice, added waist ties, and a gathered panel right under the bodice there. So I hacked it 
cut it off um, just above the waistline and added this little gathered bit. So it turned out to be really gorgeous. This is an Ankara fabric that I had in my stash and I was just really excited to kind of utilize it to make her something special for her birthday. Now we've made our way to July and if you've been keeping up with the channel you might know that in July my family and I went back home to Guinea and in preparation for that trip I did take out about three different dresses that I have already to alter. This is the second and here we have number three. Okay, so hopefully I have some photos that I'll be able to pop in for you, but really it was a matter of unpicking side seams, either hemming the bottom or bringing in or letting out some of these dresses and that was a really nice and quick make and something that allowed these dresses which I have had, which have been made for me years ago. Um, they just made them more wearable and practical for me. <laughs> I'm happy I was motivated to make those alterations. In addition to that, I went ahead and broke out a tried and true pattern for me for my kids, um, sort of like loungewear, and that's S4924. It's a vintage pattern, so sorry, but I found it. I think it's for wovens. I honestly just like hack the pattern and make slim out the leg when I'm working with knits, but I had a bunch of these fabrics from the pop section at Joanne that I wanted to use up and I just went ahead and made a bunch of a bunch of leggings joggers and shorts <laughs> for my daughter so I ended up making her three leggings like this three biker shorts like this <laughs> and I ended up making my son two Effectively, it's sort of very similar to the leggings, but let's say joggers, um, to wear as pajamas. He now wears those navy ones under all of his like pants uh, throughout the colder months, so that's also worked out. So he's using it more as like a thermal layer. It was nice because the insides of all of the like pop collection fabrics were all white. I just put white in my serger cones and just went to town. So this was definitely like a marathon sewing project and I was delighted. It's one of the few things that I actually do think I save time and money not time, that I save money on making it for my daughter <laughs> because of how quick I can make them and also how cost effective I can usually source the fabric. I can't say that about all makes. There's some things where the amount of time it takes me to make it, I'm like, I, 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 I will just go ahead and buy that. <laughs> There was also M3187 that is also a vintage pattern. It's the same one that I used when I made um, the top for my modest swimwear set, but I went ahead and made two navy tops to wear under some of the garments that I was taking with me to Guinea. This one is made out of a ribbed fabric, probably quite hot <laughs> um, to have tried to make to take on a July trip to Guinea, but it worked out okay and then I also made one out of a navy rayon knit fabric that I had in my stash as well and for that one I included a shelf bra I'll link to the video where I talk more about these as well and now we've arrived at September and I finally get to talk about what I am wearing so I actually made the top that I'm wearing right now in September out of this gorgeous hibiscus white cotton fabric that I picked up at Joanne Fabrics last year that I had been meaning to make since I got this fabric. I have wanted to make something out of it for so long but I am happy that when the inspiration struck it was this pattern that I chose to go with. It is a vintage Butterick shirt pattern and it is B6422. I thrifted this pattern and it just goes so beautifully. It's a very oversized shirt. You can see my shoulders like right here and here's the shoulder seam. So it's very oversized. I I'm absolutely going to be revisiting this pattern. I cut out a size 16 for the one that I'm currently wearing, but in the future I could see myself sizing down quite a bit. Um, sizing down possibly to the size 12 or 14, depending on just how <laughs> oversized I want it to fit. But overall, love this pattern so much. 
Then I made my new favorite knit dress, which I'm actually wearing under here right now. I made four versions of this. I made my navy version first as sort of like the test and loved it immediately. It is McCall's 8064. And you've probably heard me talking about this all fall long. I will link to the videos where I go into a bit more detail. But I think the sort of A-line silhouette of this is so flattering. It's comfortable to wear and absolutely versatile depending on what fabric you end up using. My first two were made out of quite substantial cotton rib knit fabrics. And then my other two were made out of more slinkier uh but still substantial rayon double knit fabric so you'll see one of them here in this gorgeous light blue but again just the beautiful silhouette of this made it one that I know I'm going to be revisiting possibly hacking and doing so much to in the future but I absolutely love this pattern. I then ended up making five dresses for Project Dress a Girl around the world that's hosted by Mari from Mari Sews and I was so happy to finally be able to join in on such a positive sewing challenge in the community because I have not participated in years past so I was very very excited to hop on board and was able to then subsequently uh, later on go and actually meet Mari and help with like packing up the dresses that were going to be sent off. So that was really exciting. I ended up using M8852 and uh, one of them was hacked with like a gathered panel. The other four were sort of as the pattern intended with a bit more flow and drape to it. I was able to use the remainder of this Ankara fabric uh, so that was really nice to get out those five dresses. So with the six yards of fabric that's quite a lot I think that I was able to get out of that fabric. We're now in October. I had a girls trip at the very beginning of October and I feel like the night before. <laughs> It was like the night before. I ended up doing a sewing marathon and got quite a few things made up. So first was an upcycle. I upcycled a Phil Collins concert tee that I got back in I think it was 2018 if I'm not mistaken when my best friend and I attended his concert here in Washington DC and I added long sleeves to it and embellished it with rickrack. I think it turned out lovely. I then paired that shirt with my Zimmerman inspired skirt. I am still gonna make my Zimmerman inspired dress but in the meantime in the interim I went ahead and was like kind of working on it slowly made a skirt um, did a button front placket and used these awesome star like glittery buttons that I had previously used on my silk tiger shirt from last year it's very long <laughs> it's very long so I am looking forward to still using the current tiers and actually turning it into the Zimmerman inspired dress that I had intended and adding the rickrack but it was nice to be able to wear it out in El Salvador in its current state for now. I then made an orange cover-up to go with my M8064 um, and this was something that I self-drafted. I just went ahead and cut out a really large rectangle and sort of like did some stitching to hold the armhole together and added some pom-poms to the front to give it a bit of weight so that it could um, sort of hang and drape nicely but I tossed that over my knit pink dress because we had a sunset photo shoot on the beach um, with pink and orange being the themes so that I thought was really lovely and I was able to make use of a fabric that's been in my stash for a while. I sit, I think it was since New Year's of 2021. I picked that up in the dead stock section at G Street Fabric in a haul that I did years and years ago. So it was nice to be able to make use of that and it was super simple to make. Then I finished up my dark floral half circle skirt that has an overlay on it and I'm very very happy that I did. I was able to wear it out to dinner and then since have worn it but I think it's just such a beautiful fit and again I'm reminded I really like the silhouette of a half circle skirt so I'm glad that I was able to revisit that and make use of the two yards of this dark floral print that I picked up at G Street that I love. If you think that the fabric is familiar it's because I made an S9114 tiered maxi dress out of it last year so 
I really like that fabric. <laughs> then I upcycled my red rectangle top that I made last year I believe and really that was just like finishing it up a little bit. I wanted to add a bit of length to the bottom of it. I didn't really end up wearing it out when we went on the girls trip but it was nice to have it done. I think it is quite cropped and I don't know that I feel extremely comfortable in it so it might be something that ends up being rehomed this year or if I could find someone who would really enjoy it. Then I can't forget about my navy crocheted dress. I also wore this on my girls trip. I started this project because I picked crocheting back up this year um, back in April I think it was and just wanted something to keep my hands busy. I took this project with me when I was in Guinea throughout the summer, throughout July, and was just working away at it and then actually finished it up on my girls trip in El Salvador and got to wear it. I don't really think it's something that I would wear out but I could definitely see this being something that like friends of mine might want to borrow and wear as like a swim cover-up or something like that if they're on the beach but it's just such a beautiful project and I'm really excited about the craftsmanship. It's not a pattern. I just sort of crocheted and fit it to me and then took it off and <laughs> crocheted some more. And every time I would get bored with a certain stitch, then I would just switch it up and do something a little bit different. And that was a lot of fun to kind of work that piece throughout the summer. Throughout September and October, I was doing quite a bit of mending, upcycling, repurposing <laughs> and refashioning. So I also took apart my Sirocco jumpsuit and made it fit me a lot better and I contemplated gifting it to my sister but uh, in the end it remains with me. So I'm really really happy it's using a navy, I think it's more of like a rayon rayon french terry ish fabric but it is very very nice it's peeling quite a bit so i will get like one of those fabric shavers but otherwise I, it's a very soft fabric against the skin and i really enjoyed that jumpsuit then there was s9539 and that is a mimi g wrap dress i made this last year i believe at the end of, I believe it's one of my final makes of the year last year and I absolutely wanted to love it. It's made out of a navy tan and cream sort of almost animal print mix fabric that I picked up at G Street Fabric and I've tried to make two things out of that fabric. <laughs> None of them have worked for me but it did work out a treat for my best friend so I altered it and just made some finishing touches so that she could take it and she has really been enjoying it so I love that I altered it and was able to gift that to her. Then I made a vintage B4497 dress for my younger cousin for her homecoming dress and we used this gorgeous navy um, like poly satin jacquard fabric and she looked spectacular in it. We were trying to emulate a dress that she had seen on Instagram so it had these really nice clever ties at the sides so we had a lot of work to do to actually create that dress. I'll link to a video where I go into a bit more detail about it but I'm very pleased with the way that it turned out and she seems really happy with the dress also. In November I attended my very first sewing social. It was virtual and it was hosted by Sequin Girly Creates. It was so much fun to be able to meet her virtually and a lot of the other sewists that were on uh, the sewing social as well. But because of that sort of carved out time period I worked on a ton of projects. I finally finished the S9114 hack that I'd been working on over the course of a month and all I was all I needed to do was to add the buttons. This time for my S9114 I did not forget to add waist ties and I also added pockets. It was a single sort of gathered tier and I added some side vents and I absolutely adore it for the autumn. Then I upcycled a button up men's shirt that my um, husband had and added sort of like a center panel so it was more of a tunic length and this is intended to be a layering piece over top of some other garments that I hope that I have in my closet and others that I might make in the future as well. 
I upcycled another sort of button up shirt that I have and all I did was kind of cut it off um, right under the bust and added some stretchy fabric and this is intended to be another layering piece for times where I want to sort of have that button up shirt look under maybe a dress or something but don't want the added bulk of the shirt tail um, so I was able to upcycle an older shirt of mine that I've had for coming on a decade now and gave it a new lease on life. Then I turned a cape dress that I had since college and went ahead and upcycled that into a top because that is really how I intend to wear it. It's it was too snug around the hips so by cropping that up and sort of adding some side vents I was able to make it fit me so much better and I could actually see myself wearing that in the future. Then I had two really wide large scarves in my stash, one that's wool, this beautiful embroidered scarf that I had in my stash, and I wanted to turn them into ponchos. Is it called a poncho? So I opened it down the center front, halfway up um, the scarf, and that now gives me an opportunity to kind of toss it over my shoulder and have that opening down the front. I have since worn it belted over dresses, worn it over jeans, and just sort of draped over my shoulder. I really appreciate this look so much more so I'm happy that I took the time after the social to go ahead and whip those up and it took me almost no time at all it was a very simple but effective sort of um, upcycle. Later on in November I definitely took some more time to actually invest in more alterations, upcycles, and refashions so I'll get into those. The first is this navy sort of dress hack this is using S 9225 and I use this gorgeous crinkle rayon fabric. I don't think this was the right fabric for this make. I talk more about it in the video so I'll post some photos here of me wearing this dress but it is one that I think I have to think too much about in order to wear it so I'll have to play around with a different fabric choice in the future. This is a vintage McCall slip dress. This is M. 8796 out of this really gorgeous ditzy floral print. It's a sort of like poly almost it has a crepe like texture to it. It's quite lightweight um, and I was very happy to get this made up. It gave me another chance to sort of work with a garment that was cut on the bias. I still think I have some work to do when it comes to this in getting my stitching just right so I don't have a lot of pulling and puckering along the side seams. I revisited this Sicily slip dress that I made in that same fabric that I gifted the other dress to my best friend in. So this was the first garment that I ever tried to make with it. And it sort of fits a lot better now for sure than it did the first time uh, when I made it. But I tried to gift it to my sister and she tried it on. She was like, oh, I don't really know if I could see myself wearing it. So... I'm still looking for a new home for this because I don't think I will necessarily make the effort that it would take for me to be able to wear a strappy dress like this. So in the future I have to be a bit more thoughtful like am I actually going to wear a slip dress like this? I then revisited S8655. This is a Mimi G pattern. I made it out of this lovely faux leather. It has this gorgeous pin tuck detail in the pattern and I altered it so that it actually fit a lot better. I took out some of the excess fabric that I had sort of worked into the hip when I was grading out and also finished the seams on the inside really nicely so that they lay flat. I used some seam tape there and it just works so much better. I added some elastic as the facing as well to this garment so it makes it much more comfortable and because the fabric already has stretch it just makes sense for that facing bit to also stretch a little bit uh, with the fabric. Then I did a refashion to Butterick 6705. I believe I made this in December of 2021 if I'm not mistaken, and just had not been wearing it. So 
I went ahead and refashioned it and for the top I used the bodice section and went ahead and turned that into a peplum. The photos will definitely show it off a lot better than I can with the lighting right now but it's a really lovely peplum and I'm hoping to get a lot more wear out of it. I then turned the skirt the skirt portion of that into a two-tiered sort of maxi skirt as well. I included elastic in the waistband um, sort of like as a facing as well to this make so it makes it very comfortable. This fabric does have a bit of stretch to it so it was nice to have that added flexibility in the waistline. I also made my kids robes this year and hopefully I'll be able to insert some photos of what the robes look like but for my son I used this faux Sherpa like red buffalo check fabric that I had in my stash that I'd been picking up remnants of from Joanne and I was really excited to get to make him that it's super snugly and warm and they've been enjoying wearing them. For my daughter's version she actually picked out this fabric for herself it's like a Halloween kitty print and she really loves it. It's very plush and gorgeous for both of them. I had to pat and Tetris the heck out of the hoods so I'm really really proud of the work that went into those to actually make them wearable garments for the kiddos that they love and actually get some wear out of. For that pattern I used a vintage Simplicity 1572 pattern and it's a really great robe and pajama set for kiddos. I revisited S9391 to make this little zip up sort of sweater for my son. This I feel like is a fail. I'm not quite sure what's happening with the bunching throughout it. So it has given me quite a few problems. I had lined it with this micro fleece fabric that I picked up at Joanne. This gorgeous needle cord fabric was thrifted and I did some alterations. It's a hack of that pattern, but I really wanted this to be a lovely sort of sweater that he could wear over his uniform. He still might wear it, but yeah, I wish it had turned out just a bit better. Then I made my daughter a Thanksgiving dress using, you guessed it, S8852. So I hacked it to make it long sleeves and also added a ruffled panel to the bottom and it's made out of this like charcoal background um, gold foil print that I had picked up in the remnant section at Joann's two years ago maybe. These are two honorable mentions. They're not my personal makes, but I feel like I have to share them. My best friend got back into sewing this year and she came over and I was able to help her in making her first two makes back into sewing since her last garment a decade ago. And she ended up making S8641, which is the Sohow 7 Burnside bib um, for simplicity. And then also... S9157 for her fiance. So that is a camp style collared shirt. And she picked up this really gorgeous like Whoville Grinch that stole Christmas fabric from Hobby Lobby and came over and we worked on that over the course of a couple of days. So I was really proud of just seeing how quickly she caught back on to sewing and also all of the really intricate details that she placed into it with all of the rickrack and the finishing touches etc. Very very excited and she's been sewing ever since. Then my final final make of the year which is definitely a favorite of mine is my S9190 bomber jacket made out of this incredible tapestry fabric that I had thrifted um, years ago. It's been in my stash for a while and I was just thinking about what to make with it and this bomber jacket was the absolute right choice. <laughs> I'm just so proud of it. It gave me a run for my money. There were weeks where I was talking about it in updates and sewing updates where I'm just like okay I've searched all the edges okay I've cut it out okay I've you know like taken just one small step towards making this and I'm so proud that in December I finally got to it and got it made up I still have to attach the lighting to the sleeve just don't say nothing about that in the comments but 
<sighs> I'm so proud of this. It brings me a lot of joy and confirms what I have thought to be true all along, which is I think I love a bomber jacket. Okay, I know this about myself and I can't wait to make some more. I love the gold zipper in it. It just, it works really well. So I'm very proud of this. So this is my final make of the year. In total, I think I had 76 makes, refashions, upcycles, and alterations that I worked on throughout the year. So it sounds like a big number, but again, about 37 of those things were for other people and that includes like my kiddos so in preparation for our trip to guinea alone i think that evening i sewed up eight different leggings and biker shorts like that combo so that's eight right so and it was very quick and very fast but i also made my daughter quite a few dresses i worked on the project dress a girl so there are a number of things within that 37 then I had 16 upcycles or refashions, which was really cool, and alterations as well. So again, sometimes I wasn't starting from scratch. They, these could have been garments that I had made myself and just needed to work on to make them more wearable. Garments that I worked on and altered to fix, to gift to someone else, and or garments that had been previously made for me or, or ready to wear garments that I upcycled or hacked. So I'm very, very proud of that. And then I had five non-garment makes, which were those plushy toys pretty good I had 11 dresses for myself which given the fact that I wear dresses so often I think it kind of surprises me 11 feels like a smaller number than I would assume for myself and then I had four skirts so that was pretty nice um, and then mixed up in there were like the dusters uh, knit tops and other tops and toppers and things like that so very great year of sewing in my opinion given the fact that I had trips that kind of took me away from sewing for a while I was sick for a full month and some change so there was a lot that sort of went into this year and I'm really excited for the progress that I've made and for the fact that sewing still brings me joy and I still find a lot of satisfaction in this craft and that I've been able to inspire and help bring others into the fold and seeing that happen in real life with my best friend. Um, I recently just got back from Paris and while I was there, my cousin bought her sewing machine and I took over some things for her to get started. I'll talk about that more in my Paris fabric haul. But I also have my younger cousin who I made the homecoming dress for and she's now going to be working on some pajama pants that I'll help her with. So I'm bringing more people into the sewing community which feels really really great which is a big part of why I like sharing my sewing journey and it's one of the things that I actually prefer to do within sewing. Like, it's been really wonderful that that has been able to be a part of my sewing journey this year. And I have so many other highlights that I want to share, but I will save that for another video. As I know, this one is already getting long. I hope that you've enjoyed kind of walking through my makes throughout the year. Let me know in the comments down below if any of them really stood out to you as a favorite of yours and also let me know if you've made any of the ones that I've talked about here and your thoughts on those patterns. I'd love to hear how your 2023 sewing experience was as well. Until next time friends, stay creative. Bye-bye.